So I'm going to demonstrate the jump skills that you need for this lab. Um, and I'm going to just uh, show you in terms of the acupuncture example. Um, so remember, we had a two-way table. Patients were randomly assigned to one of three treatments, real acupuncture, sham acupuncture, or non-acupuncture. And then we have two possible outcomes, a substantial reduction in pain, yes or no. So we're going to start by making a data table and jump. So I'm just going to do File, New, and create my own data table. So in the applet, you saw that you create a data table just by pretty much typing it in, um, in more or less the same format it is on your page. Um, it's very different than that in Jump. So in Jump, we're going to create three columns, one for each um, variable. So we have a column for treatment, and we're going to make a column for pain reduction. I'll just put pain reduced question mark. And then a third column for the counts. Okay, now I'm going to fill these in, and the order doesn't really matter. Um, the main thing is just to make sure that all combinations of um, the explanatory variable and the response variable are represented. So I'm doing real sham non, and then I'll do three yeses and three noes. And then as I'm typing in the counts, um, I'm just being really careful um, to make sure that I'm matching things upright since it does look different than it looks in the table. And if I leave everything like it is now, um, it's going to mess up the order. Um, Non-real sham, it's putting those in alphabetical order. That's not the order I want them in. Um, also, I want yeses on the bottom. I think that's easier to read than having to read yeses from the top. Um, so I need to change my order. The way I do that is I double click on the column heading and then under column properties I go to value order and then here I can rearrange. So I want, let's see, the easiest way is just to put non at the bottom. So I'm going to click on that and move it to the bottom and now that's the order that I want. So I'll click OK. And it shows up with a little asterisk here. You can tell that it's been changed. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So column info and column properties, I'm going to do value order. And I want yes to be the top, so I'm just going to click reverse here and click OK. All right, so now both of my variables have been modified. Um, and I'm going to use analyze fit y by x. And this is going to give me most of what I need, the graph and numerical summaries that I need all at once. So analyze fit y by x. My response variable is whether pain was reduced, so I put that in the Y. The explanatory variable is the treatment, so that goes in X. And because the data are in a table, I'm going to put the counts down here in the frequency box. Depending on the format of the data, that might not be necessary, um, but it is for this type of data. And click OK. And it gives me a mosaic plot right away, so that's great for seeing how strong the association is. Right? If there were no association, then I would expect a straight line across, right? Here's the, um, the line where it would be if there were actually no association. And so the further apart the actual conditional proportions deviate from that line, the stronger the association. So that's one way to think about strength of the association. Another thing that's helpful is to look at the row percentages. So I'm actually going to get rid of the total and the columns. Those are kind of in my way. So the row percentages are showing me within each treatment group what the outcomes were. So that's a good way to get a sense of how different is the likelihood of pain reduction in each of these groups. How big a difference does it make whether you're in the real acupuncture group, the sham acupuncture group, or the non-acupuncture group? If I want to check my validity conditions, then I might do the expected counts. So here I can see my expected counts are all nice and large. They're showing in the bottom of the table here. Um, they're all bigger than 10, so my validity conditions are met. Um, and then to do my test, I'm going to use these numbers down here for the Pearson test. So that's my chi-square statistic, 38.054. And this number over here where it says probability greater than chi-squared, that's my p-value. So there's really only one thing that you're not given here. Um, and that's a way to do a follow-up test. In the applet, it's nice and easy. If you just pick the chi-square statistic, it automatically gives you the option to follow up with 95% confidence intervals, and it'll calculate them for you. 
But unfortunately, there's nothing really like that in Jump that you can do easily. Um, Jump just really doesn't like to do Z test, and that's what this is, right? You're comparing two groups with a two proportion Z interval. So to get around that, if there's specific categories that you're interested in comparing, you can do that with the theory-based inference applet and just look at two proportions. So let's say I was specifically interested in comparing um, real acupuncture to non-acupuncture therapy. So we had 387 was the sample size in the real acupuncture group. Out of those, 184 had pain reduction. And then in the non-acupuncture therapy group, we had 388, and 106 of those had their pain reduced. So we can click Calculate. It shows the segmented bar graph here. And then I'm just going to click the box for the confidence interval. And this is giving me that same confidence interval um, that I would have gotten from the other applet. Okay, so we created a data table in Jump. Um, use Analyze Fit Y by X to do most of the analysis, and then supplemented that with the confidence interval that we got from the theory-based applet. And that should be enough to get you through the Chapter 8 lab.